All right, we're under pressure here. We got 30 seconds. We got a Hemi, we got a Shaker Challenger, we got a Mustang, we got a TA Challenger up on the lift. And in the dyno room is an old 350 310 horse. Well, that was six months ago. Now it's a 400 horsepower old 350 from a 70 yellow Rally 350. We've been playing around here with cast iron intake manifolds. We've got an Edelbrock, a couple of risers for the big Holly four barrel. We're trying to get 400 horsepower. We got bigger tube headers and a very strict time limit here because the clock is ticking. We're gonna all close right. the door, keep the sounds in, and crank that baby up. All right, give me a second. I have to prime all my absorber. Why well, you need to charge the battery? <laughs> I got a spare battery in my pocket here. I got a big battery right in my pocket. Vasily, Vasily, do the water for me. The water. Okay. No idea. I have my in my pocket. All right, we're gonna crank this baby up. It's an old Rally 350. You're gonna try an error. 70. Yeah, I think Rally 350 Oldsmobiles. It was one engine. 350, 310 horsepower, four barrel. Now we got slightly modified with a lumpy cam. Took a little bit of well. We built that camshaft low, but bigger, bigger, longer overlap. What else are we doing? We're gonna see if we can crank 400 horsepower. We got about 40 pulls of this motor. It's all broken in with non-synthetic oil. Now we're running and oil. Synthetic cams oil. Synthetic 2050 with extra zinc. That's it. The guy sits there and he takes a piece of zinc and he grinds it down. He puts it in the oil. Yeah, I got enough zinc now. That's the RPMs. And that's the RPMs. Gonna lock in at uh, 34. We've got a big party going here. Everybody's here to watch this old rocket. So we can't hit that 400 mark. We're gonna wait for that high rise Edelbrock you know intake what? manifold tomorrow. We might be able to do it at 200 meters. Maybe. 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 I don't know. Yeah. This one? Yeah, 387. 387. Party time at there. Nick's garage on the dyno. Beats lemon meringue pie, beats all dressed pizza. All 45 we're back. Temperature. Yeah, 145. Nothing is better than lots of genuine uh, horsepower. How do you lower the, can you lower the RPM manually? Yeah, just, just like on a car, it will turn down the carburetor. So what connects the lever? Is there a cable or a No, it's, water, it's a water line. It's a water line? It's a water really? line, yeah. A water line. It runs on a water line, yeah. What? And then the oil pressure and the vacuum gates are mechanical here, and then from here to the computer, it's electronic, which is right here. I'll show you the dash. There you go. You can read all your stuff there. Then there's all the gauges, watch. Uh, uh, my brother is coming. Uh, here, here, sorry. You go here, you go here, you go here. It matches what we use, you see? You see? Uh, we go on one page, that's almost everything on it. So if you want to lower the RPM, the idle yeah. RPM, you turn it down on the carburetor. Yes, yes. I brought, it, I brought it 300. I don't need to bring it any less. The stock spec on an old would be 650. But wait, it's not a stock cam. If it was a stock cam, yes, a yes. nice mile. I, I bring it 650, yes. And it would be with, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> because 800 is a big improvement. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the vacuum. Don't forget, we have to monitor how much vacuum. We need here power brakes, right? Right, right, right. We but need the vacuum. You have the W30 and no power brakes. And also, nope. also we have a pump gas. So we gotta work around with what the customer has, what we use. You gotta drive it. That's right. You gotta drive it. We feel like a taxi motor to go forever. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>
I was just saying that as long as you don't forget to put the piston rings in, if you forget, you have a lot of blow by. I had a, yeah. I have, I had a, a, a 6.2 diesel Chevy. It ran well, 150,000 miles, but it had a Banks aftermarket turbo. And you took off the oil cap, it was like a train, wow. all the blow by. The rings were so worn out. So when an engine is brand new, you don't even need a PCV because uh, there's no blow by or minimal blow by. Nice rebuilt engine, nice and tight. Yeah, it is tight. A couple of spacers on the car to try to get some more horsepower. Yeah, yeah. The higher you make it, but then yeah, you have hood it. clearance issues yeah, at yeah. some point. Fine quality Wix oil filter. This is the small block old 350. They made this also in a 403 in the late 70s, early 80s. They put them in Trans Ams, Oldsmobiles, Buicks. Yep. So it's a still a small block. The big block is the same basic motor, but the deck is taller. Same as the 366 and the 427 Chevy truck motors. And they look bigger, they are, but they're very, very similar. The old diesel 5.7. Pretty much the same motor with lots of nickel content, like the Cadillac motors, like the Buick nail heads. So tomorrow, I'm not going to be around unfortunately, we're going to put the uh, high-rise intake on. This is an Edelbrock aluminum. Slight increase in horsepower and torque, steady all the way across the line. The graph, nice and smooth, I'll show it to you in a minute. Well, you can smell that old Rocket 350, running well. How fast the piston is moving. Right There's here. some interesting things I didn't realize. Yeah. Volume the, um, efficiency, see the volume efficiency, mechanical efficiency. Then you have your BSFC. I didn't realize that the big funnel on top, the velocity stack, actually has a fan inside that measures the CFM the engine requires. And I don't know if I can see inside there, the camera sure can, but this thing is actually measuring how much CFM. This is a Holley 750 double pumper. It's got accelerator pumps front and back. Some of them have a vacuum secondary. This is a dual inlet double pumper. Way too much carburation for a 350, but we're trying for the horsepower, that magic 400 number. Yes. You were just saying, I'm sorry, I was just catching up. Oh, right it shows the, uh, Let's try, uh, the CFM that the carburetor is. Yeah, right here. Here, you can take it out of your own. Got all three pages here. Here's the barometer. We tested it 29.35, which was on, uh, I believe, Saturday. See, you know, BSC, volume efficiency, mechanical efficiency, piston speed. 2,000, what was yeah. the piston speed at the, at the high RPM? Uh, 3,200. Uh, 3,200. Feet actually. per second. Yes, at 5,700 RPM. So in two seconds, it does over a mile. In wow, two seconds. The mile's 5,200 feet. Yeah. 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 Over a mile in two seconds. One, two. If you keep the RPM at the same if you RPM, keep, If the piston will be going straight. Yeah. That's well, why when yeah. they blow up on the dyno, they go. Yeah. <laughs> that's fast. That's fast. That is really, and that's at what, 5,700 RPM? Yes, that's right. That's right. Jeez, piston speed. That's why the Volkswagen Beetle lasted so long. The ones from the 50s and 60s, yeah. they had low piston speed. Yeah. I was reading. They had very yeah. low piston speed. Yeah. So the engine lasted a long time. Because engines didn't used to last 100,000 miles. That's right. That's right. So what are what uh, CFM is the engine actually using of the 750 that's on there? 525. Oh, that's what the number. 525. Right. The, the yeah, proper carb would be no. a 550 CFM. No, the, the best carb would be uh, 650. 
Oh, the, you, you yeah, oversize it slightly. Yeah. Sometimes, in some cases, we put it a little bit smaller. Some cases, but in this one, we're going with 650. We're going to go with what the car came with, the watches. Which is probably a 715, I think it is. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think Smaller on the, on the old screen? Smaller than 650. Yeah, it won't matter. A 750, it might be on, 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 Pontiac, on, on this one. Pontiac SDs have 750s. Oh, yeah. yeah, like Pontiac has that. The SD, 55? Yeah, 73, 74. The one that yeah. didn't put in the trans... They, they, they didn't put them in the Grand Am. It was supposed to put that motor in the... I just read a big article. It was supposed to put that motor in the Grand Prix and the Grand Ams. The whole line of cars are supposed to get it. And the, and the, and the connecting rods were being stolen because they were forged. They were stealing the connecting rods. If you, if you wanted to buy them from the dealer, you had to own the car to be able to buy connecting rods because they had a shortage because guys were stealing them from the factory. I work for GM Buick five years, The SD was quite the motor. It was a real racing motor. It's amazing. They actually made it out of the factory. Yeah. You, uh, well, I just read the article, so I'm very well versed. So this is a, an original 650 CFM, rebuilt, numbers matching for a 70 Rally 350, 310 horsepower, which this exceeds by a genuine, real, gross horsepower. Last year for gross horsepower was 1970. In 71, they went with hardened valve seats for unleaded, low-leaded fuel, net ratings, which included the alternator, power steering pump, torque converter if it had an automatic, clutch assembly if it had a manual. So the horsepower dropped because the compression ratio went down, but it also dropped because they were using net ratings. So you had two things figuring against your horsepower in 71 versus 70. So for instance, an LS6 Chevelle went from 450 rated horsepower to 360. And the drop of, what, 20%? from gross to net and the drop in the compression ratio and the handy went to hydraulic lifters. And except for the Pontiac SD 455s, it was game over in 1971. The last hurrah, insurance rates were going crazy. It was over. Oh, this goes somewhere else? It isn't just here, the water line? No, that, the water comes in from here. Yeah. It goes around the engine. Yeah. You see, I see the tank fills up with cold water from the city. Goes in and comes out through the little drain. Oh, so that's the that's the heat of the, the water that's been heated by the engine being disposed of. That's it, and it gets sucked in the engine by, by Oh, so you have two tanks. Through, through, through. Ah. Yeah, it's, it's one tank by separate, it's divided. Right, I was watching it, but I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, yeah. Now I know, and this it is an air in. fuel, this measures the air fuel ratio. Yeah, uh, to see if the engine's wideband oxygen sensor. Yes, sir. So even if you don't have fuel injection, you can check yes, sir. Yeah. on the dynamometer yeah. right there. Correct. Very interesting. An assembly of fittings here. How many engines have been on this dynamometer? No. No. Lots of them. For Ford, Chevy, Oldsmobile, Mopar, <laughs> Chevy. I'll see you again. Yes, sir. Take care, man. Nice oh, you, boy. The excitement at the hot rod shop. Carburetor spacers, the engine hoist to make life easy. Yeah. Yeah. And this measures the air going into this is a fully yeah. equipped dyno shop. Yeah. The, the, the speed and the, also the, 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 the amount of the, the Yeah, I didn't realize. I just thought it was a yeah. stack, but I see it now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Measuring everything. Like a mass, mass airflow sensor. I'm learning as we go along. We're getting a description of how the dyno works. I got a video and it's interesting because a friend of mine built a dyno from yeah. bits and pieces and he wasted his time. He said in the end he should have just yes. bought. This is a Superflow SF901. And this is a 2000 horsepower model. Up to 2000. 2000, yeah. Wow, which you'll never, how many yeah. motors you put? No, we did one uh, big block shape with a, a big supercharger. A, six, a, six, a 671? 440. No, it wasn't 671. No, no, it was the one on the side. It wasn't 671. It wasn't a blower on the top. It, been, it did 1240. 1240. Yeah. Must have been kind of noisy. It was, uh, it was almost 600 cubic inches. Must have been kind of noisy that day. Very, huh? very. <laughs> the things were shaking on my. Uh, on <laughs> the truth falling off the wall. You see all those things behind you? That's over $3,000. Just the spacers oh, yeah, to adapt the carburetors. All these spacers. We have every model. 
Every model. You've got to, because a guy yeah, comes yeah, in yeah. with a 440 Chrysler yeah, yeah. or an AM, AMX 401, 390. Yeah. Yeah, you can't say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do it. For and then when you buy a bedroom, nothing, none of this comes by, eh? Oh, and then the I gotta bring the water line. See, the water line from the front cost me over $3,000. That's an inch and a half and water line with a, with a filter. There's gotta be a backflow yes, preventer, yes. presumably. Yes, build a drain to go underneath. Fresh water comes in here. That's right. Circulates no, through the sorry. brake, which is a brake no, dyno. The light through the water. The water column. Oh, it works as a cool the engine. Like, uh, the clutch. You know, like and then it dumps the water and you start recording, through you there. The clutch. There's probably a water so oil separator somewhere. Here. Okay, so it's, uh, Very yes. complicated. Yeah, this is an exhaust ducting. The eh? headers dump right there. there. It dumps the exhaust out the roof. So this dyno is a it's an engine brake dyno. Yes. Because in in England in the UK they call it brake horsepower. Yes. So, an expression we're not crank familiar with. At the crank shaft, at the back of the crank. So this is a water brake. It's a, it's resisting yes. the motor. Yes. And the resistance is the horsepower and the torque. Yes. I read a good expression where the guy said the horsepower is how how, how fast you hit the wall. Yes. The torque is how far you push the wall. Yes. Torque is when you push the pull the car to get it going, and horsepower carries it down the highway. Carries it down the highway. Nice rebuilt starter, high torque. And an MSD capacitive discharge ignition? Yes, no, uh, yes, ignition. It's built in the distributor, yes. All built in. One wire through. Pretty fancy operation. To have all, all the parts. This, too, right? this doesn't come with a, this is from a race car. What we, is this? That's a fuel cell. Oh, it's a fuel cell. Because I saw you had the bowl for a is, carburetor. Yeah, no, no, this is for fuel injection. I would measure the fuel for the uh, BSFC. So Brake this is all, specific. Uh, look, there's another pump there for fuel injection. None of this comes with the dyno. Everything's oh. after. I told you, there's a lot of money in this stuff. Yeah. Then you gotta get all different rider hoses, uh, uh, well, timing lights, I mean, all kinds of stuff, you know? Motor mounts, I get different motor mounts for every engine, different starters, different balances. Oh, you have a Mark II, Oldsmobile. I got different all, headers, header yes, bolts. I got, in, in the back here, I got a whole bunch of headers. I've got everything practically for the American V8. Including a nail head Ford Buick? Chrysler. Sorry? A nail head Buick? No, I don't have that. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, My motor's running on seven and a half I, cylinders. I, I, I would say mid 60s and up I have. Well, the nail head of the last year was 66 and it has the round bell housing similar to a Chrysler. And then after that, we have a 455 Raining for 500 horsepower with Pontiac. Which is, the is that the one that's just around the no, corner? No, no, no. That's that one looks a little worn out. another one coming up. And he wanted to go two fours, but now we're going to a full barrel. Because we want the higher income. Well, what about a three barrel? When I was a kid, there was a guy around the block, had a 62 barrels. Corvette with a 327, 340 horse, and he had a three barrel 1050 CFM. The traction bars were welded on. It looked like someone did bird poop welding. I remember looking underneath it and saying, geez, I don't know the folly of that weld for a 340 horse with this giant three barrel. I looked at it. I remember as a kid, I was 16 years old. I was babysitting as kids, and I had a third barrel that was oval. 1050 CFM. I said, I think you have a little bit too much carburation for a 327. Yeah, yeah unless you do. Boy, did he lay into that thing. He was not that, afraid that, to use that, up that Corvette. That's true. <laughs>